The key level still continues to be this 29,000 level mark, which Bitcoin is struggling to break through. Who's going to win this battle? We're a stalemate right now between the bulls and the bears. So if we can win this battle at that 29,000 level, and the price target brings you to that, apply to the point of breakout, and that will give you a price target back up in that 30,000, 31,000 region. Oh man, we need to talk, guys. Something has just happened here on the Bitcoin monthly chart, which has not happened since the previous cycle bottom. Yes, going back we have not seen a monthly candle like this since may 2019 i'm going to break down why this is so significant and what this means for the bitcoin price also on the weekly chart here we are 12 hours away from closing a critical weekly candle i'm going to explain the significance of that plus we have a crazy macroeconomic week in terms of labor figures which are due out i'm going to cover that off as well smash up likes don't forget to subscribe let's get straight into this one guys because when i saw this monthly chart i was absolutely Absolutely shocked. You look at this monthly candle we just closed here in March, just hours ago. We managed to deliver a close above the monthly, monthly, not weekly, the monthly EMA ribbon. Now, if you go back, when was the last time we managed to take a bearish situation and close back above? This doesn't count because we didn't fully lose our EMA ribbon. We closed within it and then we carried on. So you have to go back even further. You're looking at this candlestick here, which is on May 2019, a big candle here, 62% up on that month going back to May 18. And that eventually led to two things which I have to share with you. One, is very obvious, right? Once we closed above it, we never lost our EMA ribbon again, and we ran all the way up to our highs of the next bull market at 69,000. That's one thing that's clear. So from that period, you never lost your monthly EMA ribbon from May 2019 all the way to October, November time here where you created your high in 2021. OK, so this was the massive bull market move and it was indicated first and foremost by the monthly EMA ribbon being reclaimed by Bitcoin. We have just had that. We have just had that here where very narrowly we had our close above our EMA ribbon. And look how important this is, guys. This month, the EMA happened at a critical time. We managed to recover the price at a critical time because this monthly EMA ribbon was getting ready to flip bearish. You can see the yellow lines here above were starting to try cross above the red ones, okay? When these yellow ones start crossing back below these red ones, that indicates that the, re the EMA ribbon is flipping to the downside. We're managing to avert that. We're getting a close above it. Now we need momentum. We need to push on. So we had a huge, huge march here, 23%. We had a stagnant February and obviously January delivered 39%. So if you were out of the market for these three months here, you missed out on 23 plus another 40, call it 63% move here on Bitcoin. This is why it does not pay to be a perma bear. You've got to be able to flip with the data, move with the data, be in the market Instead of just sitting there regretting it going, no, the price is going to come back down. You may be right. The portion of you who are shouting that the price may come back down, you may be right. But was it worth sitting out of the market for 60% here on the move from the bottoms here to where we're at currently with the impending move that could be coming? But I have to share a warning with you guys. And this warning is very important. And I've, I've mentioned it a couple of times. Those of you who have been watching my videos um, attentively, you would have spotted this. And the warning I want to give you guys is it's not a smooth run to the all-time high. What do you notice when you look at this chart? I showed you that we managed to flip our monthly EMA ribbon bullish here. But then what do you notice? It's a tricky period. We have another month followed thereafter the May month. So May was a crazy 60% month. Then in June, you had 25%. You top out here at 13,800. Okay, so just shy of that 14,000 level mark. And then what happens? You have some horrible months. Yep, you have some horrible months and almost a year onwards, March 2020, of course, we know that was to do with the pandemic. But nonetheless, we look at that and you see that you came back down below 4,000. So my message here is you've got to be careful. Just because we closed our monthly, it doesn't mean we're not going to have turbulence. And that is why I do want to keep you guys, because everybody's really excited right now. I do need to remind you guys that the rest of this year could be turbulent. Right. Until we've seen the Fed pause and start cutting interest rates, there's still a lot going on in this market. There's a lot of delicate pieces, which is very fragile and it can change on the turn of a dime. So we need to be very, very careful. Don't just think, oh, now this is your license now for this to rocket to 100,000 or a million, like people are saying. Right. You've got to be you've got to be pragmatic. You've got to follow the data and you've got to be ready that even this could fall back down again. And we've got to be ready. Well, I'm going to be ready personally to be buying those dips. OK. And again, if you guys are looking for an exchange, buy it.
Binance. Those are two exchanges I'm currently using to trade. Links in the description. Those are affiliate links and they offer you guys some amazing bonuses if you're looking for a platform to trade. Couple that with my free TA course in jars.uk forward slash TA and you're going to be set to make money in this next bull run. Hold up. Are you tired of worrying about the security of your cryptocurrency transactions? In this crazy world that is crypto, protecting and preserving our digital assets is everything. And for that reason, I partnered with NordVPN, the best VPN service for crypto traders. With NordVPN, you can be sure that your online transactions are completely secure and your identity is hidden from prying eyes. The military-grade encryption technology technology, make sure that no one can access your data, even on public Wi-Fi networks, so you can trade with complete peace of mind anywhere, anytime. Guys, seriously, don't risk your hard-earned crypto and NFTs for the price of a coffee each month. They've also offered a free month and up to 60% off their plans. Oh, and they've got a 30-day money-back guarantee. Guys, seriously, it's a small price to play for a rapid, safe VPN. Definitely check it out. Link is in the description. Ejars.uk forward slash NordVPN. And let's get back into this video. Now, let's get into the nitty gritty. Of course, this is a Sunday and it's a weekend period. So you have low volumes. Very important to be very, very careful if you're trading on the weekends. But what you can see is Bitcoin is continuing to consolidate. If you look at the picture we've got here, the key level still continues to be this green line here. This 29,000 level mark, which Bitcoin is struggling to break through. And the question is, Who's going to win this battle? We're a stalemate right now between the bulls and the bears who both do not want to give up this level. What the bears want to do is they want to reject us from this level and they want to be sending us down to 26,000 and then our next support at 25,000. Both levels I'm still prepared for. If we get to those levels, I will be nibbling and I'll be buying very heavily at the 25,000 level. For the bulls, however, what we want from a bullish perspective, we've got our higher lows. This is great. Right. I'm happy with this. We've got a low there. We've got a higher low. We look like we're trying to form a higher low, but we need to be able to finally push above 29, retest it on the backside and go work through 30,000. That is what we need to finish off this week. And I'm going to come on to the macro data, which is coming out, which could fuel this or could reject this. And it's coming at a critical time. So with that said, that is the stalemate. Nobody wants to give up this level. And it's a very, very important level right now on Bitcoin. Once that mini battle has been decided, then that gives the green light for all these major patterns, these bigger time frame patterns that I've been sharing with you guys over the last few weeks to now play out towards our price targets. So if we can win this battle at that 29,000 level, if we can work beyond these levels, then you know that we're forming this ascending broadening wedge. And the price target brings you to that 33,000 region. The only thing stopping us now is that micro battle I just shared with you on the hourly chart at that 29,000 level. So that target continues to be in play. Of course, if they're able to send us down to 26, then this pattern will break down and you start coming back inside the wedge, which of course is what the bears are trying to do, trying to bring us back into this huge ascending broadening wedge. Similarly for this channel here as well, if you're looking at this channel here, you'd want a nice breakout to the upside, right? You'd want this price point to get a break of the top side, a retest here, and you want it to go extend itself for a continued move up towards that 32, 33 region. But it's got to win this channel. So far, we've been rejected from here. We've created a higher low. And now we're just meandering. We're just meandering here. We need some direction. Are the bears going to push it down to the bottom towards 27,000? Or can we finally get that break? That is what we're looking for. And I think the macroeconomic data this week could give us that direction. And when we head over to look at the calendar, what is it we've got, guys? We've got a big week for labor figures. Yes, on Tuesday, on the 4th of April, we've got the jobs figure. That is a jobs openings figure. On Wednesday, we get the ADP private job role figure, which we're going to look at. But then that culminates in the most important figure, which the Fed use for their next interest rate decision, which is the non-farm payrolls. That is on Friday the 7th. So mark your calendar, 4th, 5th and 7th. We will be covering it as always on this channel. So make sure you're subscribed. This is what could set the direction for the markets. You can see Fear and Greed Index is sitting at 63. Markets are quite comfortable at this level, guys. There's not much fear in this market, but a quick fall down to that 26 or 25 level and you're going to see people panic again. So that's why I'm not doing anything right now. I'm not chasing those green candles. There's no need for me to. The market's quite comfortable right now. And if we break through 29, I'm definitely not chasing those green candles. Let it do its thing. I'm happy with my position. Had I not been happy with my position, that's a different conversation. If I was new to crypto, I'd still be looking at this from a holistic perspective and saying, OK, look, 28,000 is certainly not as cheap as Bitcoin was when we're sitting at 15,500. But do I really want to cry over spilt milk when we're not even close to all time highs? 
That's the kind of rationale I personally would be using if I was new to crypto right now. Given the fact that we've maneuvered this whole bear market together at 15,500 in the trenches down here, I've been spoiled, right? I've managed to buy a lot of Bitcoin here. So I'm certainly not going to be chasing these green candles here. If we come down into resistance like that 25 level on this macro picture, that would be a nice juicy buy from me here at 25. I'll nibble a little bit at 26 here if we do get down to 26. But at 25 as well, do a bit more serious buying in terms of my long term portfolio. If it wants to keep running, let it keep running. I'm not going to be chasing those green candles. That's very important. The next Fed meeting is on May the 3rd. So we've got a full month from now and markets are starting to price in now. It's 50-50, but just slight edge here to a pause. We'll monitor this over the next four weeks because, of course, this will change as the non-farm payrolls come out on Friday and the various other bits of data we'll get throughout April. And last but not least, I do want to remind everybody here sitting on the daily chart, Bitcoin has been on a tremendous run, right? Ever since here, the middle of March, where we reclaimed our daily EMA ribbon, this has been a nice extended run. We had a little bit of a consolidation, but this is not major. A sideways consolidation shows a lot of strength for the bulls, okay? So what we do want to see is even if we do have a deeper pullback into the EMA ribbon, it's perfectly healthy. I, I wouldn't have an issue whatsoever if we want to come and touch our EMA ribbon. That's perfectly normal. I would see, as the, see that as us building scaffolding for a bigger move to the upside. But so far, the strength is with the bulls right now. Now, in the very near term, the pattern I'm watching here on the hourly chart for anybody looking to trade short term movements, I am looking at this symmetrical triangle, a break to the upside of this pattern. And we could be working our way to the top of this wedge at the very least of that 29,000 mark for another test, breaking that level. And of course, you're looking for a much more extended move, which you could take as the measured move from here to here apply to the point of breakout and that will give you a price target back up in that 30,000 31,000 region now equally if we break this pattern to the downside then you'll be looking to fall to the bottom of the wedge which could bring you down to that 27,800 level although really you've got some support coming in at 27,000 flat as well at this pivot point here so that's what I'm looking for here on the short term time frame big week coming up in the macro economy big monthly close achieved 12 hours away from getting that weekly close above our EMA ribbon as well and things are starting to look positive here on Bitcoin. Of course, we do have to watch the delicacies around inflation, around interest rates, around what's going on with the banking crisis as well. I will bring you the latest updates as and when we get them throughout this week. So make sure you subscribe. Make sure you go watch my phantom video from yesterday as well. I'll link that up for you guys and I'll see you in the next one.